Okay, so I'm going to do this video to introduce this site to, um, I have two Spanish 111 online classes. Um, I am in FON05, so if you are in FON07, then just remember that the course code that I refer to here refers to FON05, not FON07. And so you will want to go into your Moodle site and check for your particular course code, okay? Um, and so just to kind of go over what's going on is that um, Moodle, you're going to want to have access to Moodle and you're going to want to have access to my language labs. We're going to consider Moodle our classroom and my language labs essentially our workbook. Um, and so just to kind of run over what's in Moodle, um, here you can find me. This is my name, my email, my phone number, my blog. Um, my blog is this right here. Um, if you click on that link, it'll take you right out here. Um, and it just basically, I just put kind of extra stuff out there. So it's nothing that you need to have. But let's say, for example, we were going over La Casa Azul. And um, this takes you to a virtual tour. And I showed it in class. And maybe we didn't get to see the whole thing. And you were interested in it. Then you could come out to the blog and have it for yourself. So I, I put a lot of things on here so that I can easily pull them up in class but then they're available for you if it's something that you wanted to pursue further. And, um, you know, sometimes it'll be links like Senor Jordan is a, pers a YouTube personality that has a lot of um, Spanish grammar videos in YouTube. So he's somebody you might want to look at. Um, so I might post something from him. Um, so anyway, moving on from there. Um, these are my office hours. You can see that one day out of the week I'm at High Point. I do teach at High Point, at the High Point campus. Um, some semesters I also teach at Cameron, but you're lucky this year I am only at the High Point campus one day a week. I do not have to go to Cameron, so you'll be able to find me more quickly. Um, with that being said, um, off, um, contacting me. Um, like I said, this is my phone number, but I think sometimes students are under the impression that we only teach one class and then the rest of the time we're in our offices and able to answer questions quickly um, and deal with student problems rather quickly. That is not the case. Um, most of us are teaching six classes and as you can see I travel to another campus. We also do advising and we serve on committees. So we are often not in our offices like our office hours are when we are definitely there. Um, otherwise, we could be all over the place. So sometimes calling isn't the best way to get in touch with us, especially if it's after hours. If you have a problem at 7 o'clock at night, calling me really isn't going to help you because I can guarantee you I'm not still at work at 7 o'clock at night. So um, sending me an email is a good idea. Um, I do have a smartphone, so I check my email fairly regularly. If your question is something that I can answer quickly, I'll probably answer you even if it's late. I mean, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to be working after hours, but I do, like I said, I do check my phone a lot. So I, you know, if I see it and it's something that I can answer, I will do it. If it's something that's a little more complicated and requires a video like what I'm doing right now to more fully answer your question, you're not going to hear back from me until the next morning, um, more than likely, just because I have, you know, in the evening things get crazy and I have to take care of home stuff too. So, um, also, another way that you could get in touch with me, um, if you scroll down here, I have information about our classes in here, I think on both the sites, but here it'll give you a little video about how to use Skype. So if you set up your Skype account, you could also Skype with me. And sometimes um, I'm pretty sure I set it up on my phone so that if you send me a Skype message, I think it'll pop through kind of like a text message. So you might want to set up the Skype because we could communicate that way. Or if I'm on my computer a lot of times, you can see I already have it up right now. Um, I leave up the Skype, and so if you um, Skype me, there's all, all sorts of ways that I can share my screen with you. We can text back and forth. You could see me. I could see you. Um, so you might want to play around with that and see if that's another way for you to communicate with me. Um, what else? Office hours, Skype. Um, Email, so email is probably a better way to get in touch with me. Um, over on the side, also, you'll have um, copies of your syllabus, our grading rubrics. These grading rubrics I take from our Pearson site. They were created by Pearson, and I use them to evaluate writing assignments and to evaluate listening assignments. So if you want to know how your grade is calculated, you could go through and look at these rubrics. Um, 
the course schedule. I might update this, but as of right now, I've just kind of basically told you that your homework is due by the end of the day on Thursday, unless otherwise stated. Um, let's see. And that just takes you to your grade book. And so let's look at our syllabus. Um, the syllabus just tells you what your prereqs are. Hopefully you've met those if you were able to enroll in the class. And if you are in my FON07, this would just read FN07 up here. Um, this just tells you what the course is. This gives you the book. You do not need to run out and buy the book, however. Um, when we go into my language labs, which I have a second video that does that, um, I'll show you where the e-text is. Um, and you can actually use your e-text. Um, and if you look out here, um, where's the e-text? Um, I've got links that will take you to where you can set up a, um, the app on your tablet. And it won't work on a phone, but it will work on a tablet. So this is how you can set the, get the e-text app on your an Android tablet. And this is how you can get it on an iPad. And you could look at your book that way, or it's actually embedded into the um, site. So on the computer, when you look at the second video I have on this, you'll be able, the one that I have on mostly my language labs, you'll be able to see, um, you'll be able to see your text and how it works on the computer. Um, so just the main things that you'll need is access to the text, which you can have just by using the e-text, but it's essential that you have access to my language labs, and that's the URL, and I have it embedded throughout our site. If you, um, This is a link to my language labs, and if we go in, this is the first week, but if we go into the first week of assignments, this is a, I tried to embed the link all throughout the site, so you're gonna have no trouble finding, um, finding a link to my language labs, Oops, which I just took us there. Okay, um, and so then it's gonna be essential that you have access to my language labs. Don't buy a physical workbook. I don't even know if you can find a physical workbook, but we're gonna do all of our stuff in my language labs, so you do not need a physical works, workbook. You do, however, need access to high-speed internet, your email, Moodle, um, Skype, if you choose to use it. And you're, if you have, hopefully you don't have an old computer because it's probably not gonna work well if your computer's really old. And most computers now have a microphone um, and they have a built-in speaker. So, because you will do some activities where you record your voice for me in Pearson, and I will be assessing how well you're pronouncing um, Spanish words. And so for that, you need the ability to be able to record your voice. Um, and if you run into trouble with it, I have some helpful links on our site um, up here. Um, okay, so to get Pearson to work, you'll want to turn off your pop-up blockers, do your browser tune-up. And this also, sometimes people have to set up their microphones. And so all of these are videos that tell you how to do that if, you know, the first two are essential. The other ones, it just depends on your computer. So I've gone through and did some troubleshooting and tried to make um, videos that explain to people how to get their microphone set up. So once all that's done, you should be able to record your voice. Um, this just gives you my information, my email, where I'm located, my phone. I do not know why I have this in here. I've seen this a couple times. It's just 50444. I'm going to have to go back through and fix some of these. Um, and then you have your, you know, our beginning date, our census date, um, withdrawal date, etc. Okay. Um, and this just tells you that you have to, um, for you guys, you're going to have to complete an assignment by the census date in order to remain in the class. Um, and I'll go over that in a little, uh, well, actually, I'll go ahead and go over it since we're talking about it. So if you go back to start here, um, this tells you right here, that remember you have to complete the required census assignment academic academic integrity by 119 it's right here it doesn't count as a grade but whenever you're ready to complete this assignment you need to click it and that's how your attendance is counted because for um for an online class the, you have to do something in the online class by the census date or you get dropped um withdrawal this just tells you that, um, you know, if you want to withdraw, you've got to take yourself out of the class by the withdrawal date. Um, this just tells you what your student learning outcomes are. This is outcome one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think I've gone through and tried to link each week with an SLO. So you'll see this one tells you that these activity, the, 
these assignments and the activities that go with it will address SLOs one and two. So I tried to also post that there so you know what outcomes you should be achieved, like what, what, what skills you should have upon completion of those activities. Um, and then this is your grading scale, which hopefully everybody knows we're on a 10-point scale. This is how I evaluate your work, um, how, how I will take your grades and calculate your final grade for the course. Just pay attention to your cultural assignments and homework assignments. A lot of times people just don't do everything. Most of the people who do poorly in my class, it's an, if you do everything that you're supposed to do, there's no way for you to fail. You're going to pass, uh, probably with a C or better. The people who do poorly, it's if you're doing poorly, it is not because, um, it could be because of your performance, but why you're actually doing as poorly as you are if you're failing, it's going to be because you're not completing assignments. So just make sure you're doing everything that's asked of you every week. It's really important that you stay on top of your work. And you cannot wait until the last minute. One, I don't let you make things up, but it's not in your interest anyway. There's no way you can make up all the work for an entire semester in the last weeks of class, which is what people sometimes want to be able to do. It's just not possible. Um, this just tells you that we try to give you quality instruction, and um, these are the individuals that you can contact if you feel like you are not receiving um, quality instruction. So you would start with me if you have a problem, and then you would move up the chain, you would go to the chair, and then you would go to the division chair. So those are the people that you would contact if you had a problem and I was unable to address it. Let me just see where I'm at on time. Okay. Um, this just tells you, this is your ADA statement, tells you what we do for students who have disabilities and need services. This is Title IX, tells you what um, should happen if you feel like uh, the class or I am in, in violation or another student is in violation of Title IX. Um, this is support for the online classroom. And remember that this support is for Moodle. We are also using Pearson. If you need help with Pearson, then you're going to want to come out here and you're going to want to call this number. These are the, this will put you in contact with people who can help you with Pearson. Okay, these are people who will help you with Moodle. Um, if the school is closed, the instructor will communicate the information for makeup of scheduled class time. Um, and so I just got the notice, you probably saw that come through, that class is closed on. Um, well, for you guys, this won't matter. You're online, so closed doesn't matter for you guys. We will keep going. Um, tutoring, these are different tutoring resources for you all. Class attendance, um, this just kind of tells you that you, you don't want to miss more than two weeks worth of classes um, or it's really hard for you to catch back up. So I will never, you, we don't really drop students for not attending class, but your grade is going to be significantly impacted. And I don't even have to pretty much, I don't really need to do anything for that to happen. Um, because if you're not coming to class, you're probably not completing your work. And if you're not completing your work, like we've talked about before, you're not going to get a good score. So just make sure you're coming to class and you're doing your work and you'll be fine. Um, this goes over student academic integrity, meaning do not cheat. Um, the conduct policy, um, these are the behaviors you're, uh, that you should exemplify while you're in the classroom. This tells you again my email policy, try to return emails within 48 hours. Late work. Um, I don't generally accept late work, but if you ever have a problem, these are the, this is the information I want from you guys, and I especially need it from you all because both of you are an online class, um, so it's really important that you guys um, it's really important that you guys give me this information, um, and then it just tells you the syllabus is subject to change. Okay, so just a couple more things. I um, the course. So when we want to set ourselves up in my language labs, we'll, we'll talk about my language labs in a few minutes. But this also takes you to tutoring, technical support, the library, student services, accent marks. People ask about that all the time. That I think takes you to a, the document that does um, problems with an activity, so you can see the information that I need. Um, how to turn off your pop-up blockers, how to set up your microphone. So there's a lot of things on the side that um, can help you.